introduce a problem, problem in linear algebra, uh, namely uh, inverses of some matrices. Here we will deal with uh, not only the finite matrices but also infinite ones. Okay. Uh, So uh, the problem is very simple. Let's see it. Here, E is any countable set. For example, d-dimensional <coughs> integer lattice space. And A is any positive definite bounded linear operator on the Hilbert space L2, small L2 space. And we assume for the operator A the following <coughs> assumption A. Uh, this condition is so-called diagonally dominant. It says that there exists a positive number lambda such that this is uh, the component in the XX diagonal component. Subtracted by this one, so uh, yes, uh, the components may be complex numbers. So uh, this one norm means just L1 norm. But uh, in this talk, we will uh, just consider only real case. So uh, you may think of this as just a absolute value of this number. So you see here we sum up whole components in the axis row except the diagonal component. And this condition demands that number is strictly smaller than this diagonal component by the number lambda, uniformly for all uh, rows. Okay? And what is the result under this condition? It's the following. Theorem. We assume the assumption A for the operator A. Then, for any subset Cush of E, we consider the submatrix A Cush Cush. This means uh, this matrix. So we look at the matrix A through the window given by uh, the set Cush here. So. Cush by Cush submatrix is denoted by this way. We consider this submatrix. Then it says that it is invertible first, and moreover, we can control the components of the inverse elements. So, it, the x y component of this inverse matrix is uh, dominated by this number. Uniformly for all psi here. Here M is defined as follows. For the diagonal components, this is just L number, 1 over lambda. And for off diagonal components, uh, M is defined this way. Here gamma is the infinite sum of uh, these powers of some stochastic matrix on the set E. Uh, we will uh, see. Uh, the concrete form of this uh, stochastic matrix. Okay, I, I thought this is uh, 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 it's a very interesting uh, result, uh, but maybe uh, some one in the audience know, knows very well. I, I don't know if this kind of result is uh, quite well known or not, but uh, at least in some linear algebra books I have seen and some result that for finite matrix is A, if A is uh, diagonally dominant, then A is invertible. So such kind of result is given in some linear algebra books. But uh, uh, I want you to know uh, more uh, concretely, more in detail about uh, the behavior of the inverse matrix here. So this is, uh, it, this theorem says that we can control 
uh, the inverse matrix is uh, very uniformly. Okay, uh, this is all uh, what I wanted to uh, say here. Uh, now, uh, uh, next I would like to show you uh, by uh, computer uh, program, MATLAB, uh, the results for some concrete examples of uh, what the inverse uh, matrix is looks like. And then uh, I would like to give you uh, the detailed, detailed proof with time. Okay, so let's see uh, some examples here. Uh, in the example, I will give you some picture which uh, looks like the following. Okay, so uh, A, Kush Kush, inverse of A Kush Kush looks like this way, some matrix here. And first, uh, uh, let me tell you uh, the original matrix A. So, uh, in the examples, I will take uh, the set E, uh, the integer, uh, uh, natural, number, natural numbers, and then A looks like uh, this way, so some matrices, say M by M matrix. And uh, the, the assumption demanded that this diagonal, comp diagonal component is uh, uniformly uh, greater than the uh, of diagonal sum here. So um, the examples here, the, uh, all the diagonal components are constants, say A, with positive number. And the of diagonal components here, I is here, and J is here. So a i j component here. I will take uh, several uh, kind of forms. For example, uh, typically I will take this is the form given by one over i minus j to the power b here. B is also a positive number. Okay. Yes, uh, we will look at uh, this kind of matrices, matrices and uh, we compute uh, via MATLAB the inverses of this matrix and uh, we will look at some pictures. And uh, uh, the result will be done by graph here. So this is the axis I, axis for rho and axis for J. So here I, J position. And uh, this is for the components. So a kush, kush inverse i j here. So uh, it will be done some position here. So we will see some uh, surface here. Okay. Typically, uh, I prepared this, uh, some examples. Uh, one is. A looks like uh, all diagonal components are one, any M by matrix, and uh, I will consider tri diagonal matrices and uh, nearby ones here one, one over three here, and one over three here. Okay, one over three here, and every components are zero. You see. Uh, this line are all 1 over 3 and this diagonal 1 and uh, this line uh, 1 over 3 and the other components are 0 here. So uh, of your 3, uh, this matrix A satisfies uh, the former di diagonally dominating property because uh, if you sum this row then this is only 2 over 3 and this is strictly smaller than one by one third. One example, 
And uh, in order to compare uh, the result, I will also consider some example, uh, which is a stochastic matrix. Diagonal components are one, and uh, this is also tri-diagonal. Uh, the off-diagonal components here, one over two, and the one over two, or one, one over two, one half here, and the other components are zero. Okay. Of course, this matrix A does not satisfy the assumption A because if you sum two one halves, so then it is equal to one. So there is no gap, no lambda, no positive lambda here. Anyway, we will uh, look at uh, this example also. And uh, as I said before, we will also consider this kind of things. And uh, also, uh, we will consider some examples which are given by some Fourier coefficients. Okay, so, yes, this is a constant number A, and uh, here, this is given by some free, uh, free interval, the uh, square E2 minus I here. Yes. I minus J times T and here times low of T DT. Okay. So uh, this is nothing but the Fourier coefficient of, of the function rho uh, here i minus j so we are computing this, uh, this point and uh, typically uh, we can take any kind of functions rho here uh, typically in this example I uh, have taken uh, 1 plus sine t so this function we will take here yeah. t. Okay, uh, let's see some pictures. First, uh, this is tri diagonal matrix. Let's take uh, 50 by 50 matrix. Okay. Yes. So, this is uh, the picture of uh, the inverse matrix of uh, this one. So, uh, you see. Uh, Ah. Ah yes. Uh, I have uh, said that uh, the result says that uh, says that the off diagonal components uh, must be summable. So, uh, in a sense, it must uh, decrease uh, in a sense very fast. So, uh, very drastic. You see, uh, this inverse components of this matrix. Uh, uh, decreases uh, drastically, very fast. Uh, if we turn uh, the picture, then it looks like the following. This kind of thing. So, uh, the diagonal part is dominating and off-diagonal uh, parts uh, are very, very small. Okay? So, from this picture, uh, we can uh, feel the result of our theorem. Next example for this case, stochastic matrix. I don't know, uh, every stochastic matrix is, is invertible or not? Uh, anyone knows the answer? 
any stochastic matrix is invertible or not? I don't know. From Perron Frobenius theorem, uh, it has uh, some uh, strictly positive uh, largest eigenvalue, and the other ones are uh, smaller than that. And I don't know if uh, there are some uh, zero eigenvalues or not. Anyway, for this example, uh, this picture says that it is invertible. So uh, you could see the picture. Let's take uh, uh, again uh, 50 by 50 matrix. So this is the result. If we turn the picture, then it looks like this way. Uh, comparing to the former case, uh, this matrix does not satisfy the assumption and uh, uh, though uh, uh, this matrix is also invertible but uh, uh, we are not so sure uh, whether uh, it decreases fast or not uh, by looking at this picture so in a sense it has a, a fat tail okay uh, let's see the other the other examples mm, this kind of thing so uh, polynomially decreasing Yes, polynomially decreasing. Uh, let us take uh, again 50 by 50 matrix. So diagonal components A, we take 2, and uh, the power also take 2. Then uh, uh, for those values, uh, uh, this matrix also satisfies the assumption A. And uh, the, this picture says that uh, the inverse matrix components decrease uh, very fast uh, as we go along the uh, far from uh, the diagonal okay now uh, here for this example we can see very interesting uh, feature namely let us slightly change the diagonal component A so Again, 50 by 50 matrix, and uh, this time 1.7, again the same P, then uh, looks a little bit different, but uh, this condition, uh, anyway, so this picture says that in uh, this example also uh, the off-diagonal components uh, decrease uh, uh, fast. Okay. However, if we uh, further uh, make, uh, make small for the number A, then uh, we see very different picture. So let's take one point, maybe five here, and the same two. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the components of uh, the inverse matrix. So we can never control the components of uh, the inverse matrix here. So uh, obviously uh, this case uh, does not satisfy our uh, assumption A. Very irregular feature. Final example, uh, follow said. Uh, from the Fourier coefficients. Okay, matrix components are given this way, and here A, I just took uh, the sum, sum over all uh, of diagonal row, row components. Fifty by fifty. Yes, here also the same thing. So diagonally, uh, the invert matrix is uh, also diagonally dominating and of diagonals are very small. 
Okay, this is uh, what I wanted to uh, say you. In the remaining time, uh, we will prove uh, this theorem by using some uh, Markov process. Okay, uh, let me close everything here. Okay, the proof. Under our assumption A, we are looking for uh, the inverse matrix. So, uh, for it, let us consider the following uh, matrix equation. Here, h is an element of L infinite bounded function on the set xi here. Okay, this is given a function h in the space. We are looking for the solution f satisfying this matrix equation. Obviously, by taking then h is equal to the Dirac function at the point y, then uh, the solution, if it exists, f is nothing but the inverse of applied to this, uh, this function. So, We put delta uh, function here, and we find the solution f. Then the solution is nothing but uh, this component, the uh, feature uh, we are looking for. Okay. So uh, we would like to solve uh, this uh, matrix equation. For this, uh, we change uh, this equation by introducing some uh, Q matrix uh, appear appearing in. Uh, Markov processes so define first we extend the set to Cush union Cush bar union delta here so Cush bar and delta are abstract ones so Cush bar uh, this is just a copy of this set so we denote the elements by x bar as x runs over the set xi and uh, delta is any abstract point which uh, plays the role of symmetry or, or uh, the trap in, the, in our Markov process. Uh, for the case uh, uh, that uh, xi is equal to the whole space E, then we just ignore this trap. So we uh, extend by E union E bar. Anyway, and we also extend the functions f by the following f originally a function on the set x, and we extend it to a function on the set uh, this whole this uh, extended set by this is equal to the original one and uh, minus times the original one and by zero. So we extend uh, the originally given function f by uh, this one. And uh, 
Next, we introduce uh, uh, some Q matrix here. So, uh, we would like to construct some Markov process on on the set, uh, this kind of set. So. Uh, uh, by a Markov process, we mean uh, that uh, there is a given a transition uh, function, say p t x y, this kind of thing. This means that uh, initially the point, the process is at the site x, and then this is the probability of the process uh, is in the site y at the time t. Okay. Uh, so uh, we would like to give, we would like to define uh, that uh, probability density. So uh, uh, in many cases, uh, we can write uh, this operator uh, by uh, using the generator this time. So uh, if this uh, transition matrix is given this way, we call this operator Q. Uh, the uh, Q matrix for the Markov process. So, uh, because this is uh, a probability, every component x, y is always non-negative. Therefore, and uh, also, if you sum over all y, then it must be equal to one. This kind of thing, uh, this function satisfies. So therefore. The Q matrix also satisfy uh, some uh, prescribed conditions, uh, namely Q, a matrix Q is called a Q matrix if Q is non-negative for the off-diagonal components and if you sum over all Y, then it must be equal to zero. So uh, if a matrix Q satisfies these conditions, then it is called a Q matrix, and uh, uh, any Q matrix defines a, a probability, probability density operator by uh, this relation. So uh, we would like to define this kind of Q matrices. Okay. So, a uh, little bit complicated. First, we fix a strictly positive number, not smaller than this number. This is sub over x. Some, uh, uh, for the proof, we just consider the real case. We are assuming every component is real. And uh, here, a, the absolute values here. So we denote uh, this number by QA, and we fix any positive, num positive number Q here. Then define a Q matrix on the set. Okay. So uh, you don't need to remember everything here. This is a little bit a very tricky. the uh, negative part of this number for x not equal to y and y bar
ですね。Yes, it looks very complicated, but uh, uh, so uh, this kind of thing, these numbers say some probability uh, at the site X uh, to jump to the site Y. I said that delta uh, is a symmetry, therefore, uh, once uh, a process, uh, say, from X, jumps to this uh, trap, then yes, yes, uh, there is a probability uh, to go into uh, this trap by this quantity. But once uh, it goes into that trap, then it never comes out. Uh, this uh, this uh, final uh, line says uh, this kind of thing. So the probability from, uh, uh, from to jump from this, this trap delta to any point x is zero. Okay, so this kind of nature it has. Anyway, uh, you may just ignore everything here, but uh, why I introduced uh, that Q matrix is the following. By using this Q matrix, we can rewrite this original equation in the following way. Then, this is equivalent to say, to saying, ah, excuse me, I have to introduce one more thing. Uh, Q matrix we introduced th this way, and some potential function we need to introduce. So define a potential function V psi. just uh, define uh, some function v psi uh, uh, from our assumption a this function you see uh, this value is strictly smaller than minus lambda over q because uh, this value Multiplied, then multiplied by minus one, then uniformly greater than lambda. Therefore, this function is uniformly smaller than um, negative lambda over Q. Okay. Then, by introducing those two quantities, uh, a Q matrix and a potential function V, then uh, this original equation is equivalent to the following. minus K 
ti so this one uh, here, this is a matrix and uh, this operator uh, acts as a multiplication operator okay so uh, this equation and this equation is the same so this is nothing but uh, to make uh, this whole, whole now after representing uh, this way we can use so called Feynman Cox formula to get uh, some solution to get uh, the solution uh, f tilde here so Feynman Cox formula gives the solution of f tilde here is given this way uh, let's see this is expectation the process xt is the Markov process uh, with the generate q okay so uh, this is a very nice uh, expression for our solution now uh, uh, we are looking for uh, the inverse components so we have to take for the function h the Dirac delta function delta y here so let's do it so So if we take this h by delta function here, then this is, and uh, let us take uh, the process start uh, from the point x. So here, x here, and this is inverse. Okay, yes, this one. Now, uh, so uh, delta tilde y is nothing but delta y minus delta y bar. So we can uh, introduce some projection operator psi by No, no, no. Just delta here. So uh, this is a, in a sense a middle map. So we uh, descend this mirror image to the original uh, one. Okay. So this, uh, let us define this uh, projection operator pi. Then uh, we can rewrite this one as just delta y here. And this is projection operator pi and uh, uh, our function is uh, symmetric on the uh, the projection so we can just write here pi okay so uh, this is uh, the original process uh, living on this large set now we uh, are looking for the distribution of the process uh, on 
on the real, real point six here. So we would like to uh, look at uh, the distribution of this new process. And it is not hard to get uh, uh, the distribution of uh, this uh, uh, restriction, namely the process pi on psi union delta is uh, distributionally the same as uh, the process generated by uh, the following uh, uh, another uh, Q-matrix. hat psi we can define concretely Okay, obviously this uh, Q hat uh, also when uh, the process uh, goes into the trap, then it never comes out. So uh, this value must be zero. And uh, uh, the reason why I wrote uh, down here is, is to show you uh, uh, the nature. You see, uh, we, are, we would like to consider very uh, various subsets psi here, but the, the probability density for this matrix jumping from x to y is not dependent on the set psi here. So, so I mean, if we are considering uh, different q hat matrix with the here psi prime, say, then, so this set is psi, and we are considering uh, a larger set psi bar. And uh, let's consider two points x and y. And we would like to see the jump probability jumping from x to y. But uh, for this uh, process, the jump rate is this one. And also for uh, this q psi prime process, the jump rate is the same because those values uh, do not depend uh, is, uh, is not dependent on the subset psi. Okay, this is uh, uh, what we have to notice at this point. Okay, then uh, now we can control uh, this value in the following way. You see, uh, 
our process starts from the point X. Until the process touches the point Y, this value is zero. So uh, uh, this integral, by introducing uh, the heating time, tau psi y, by the first heating time of the process to touch the side y, then up to time, this heating time, uh, this is zero, so this integral changes to the, this value to infinity. So, uh, for those value, and uh, we have noticed that this value is uniformly smaller than uh, minus lambda over Q. Therefore, we can uh, take out that factor from the uh, integral zero to this heating time. And we use uh, a strong Markov property for this Markov process. Then uh, this value can be controlled as follows. As the value of this one is smaller than or equal to one over lambda this way. Yes. Uh, here I uh, skipped some part. So we use a strong Markov property. Then uh, from the integral zero to uh, this heating time, we uh, take out this factor uh, because uh, this is uniformly smaller than this value. So uh, this factor comes out this one. And uh, by using the strong Markov property, we we have the same thing as before. And uh, we can at least control this uh, uniform norm of uh, the matrix. So uh, uh, that norm uh, it gives uh, some uh, uh, mm, factor here. So it appears like this way. OK? Uh, anyway, this is uh, uh, the form we arrived at. Now we would like to control this one. First, uh, for the diagonal component, if we take y to be x here, then uh, the uh, heating time is just zero because uh, uh, the process starts from x and we are computing the heating time on the same side x, so this is nothing but zero. Therefore, this becomes zero, so just one. So we have a, a the value for the diagonal is made by 1 over lambda here. So you have seen in the beginning. Next, we would like to compute the off-diagonal components. So uh, we assume y is different from x here. And then we define this value. This one. by this one by u kush y is x for y is different from x. So we would like to control this one, this u function. Okay? Now we uh, repeat this argument, then we get the following. Yes, uh, introduce a stochastic matrix
matrix pi psi hat by pi hat psi identity plus q hat so uh, by stochastic matrix it means that uh, uh, all components of uh, this matrix components are non-negative and if you sum uh, for each row then it uh, ends with uh, one the value one so this is a Q matrix so if you uh, sum over uh, excess row then uh, it becomes zero but here we have one so this is uh, a stochastic matrix and uh, we have defined this so that uh, the excess component is non negative so this is anyway a stochastic matrix okay then by using this stochastic matrix we can repeat this this one and then we obtain the following at tau b the random variable which is exponentially distributed with parameter 1 then then we get this function okay this is u why is it why is different from x is uh, the following so uh, mm. uh, the Markov process of uh, this one, uh, the uh, jump rate is uh, this function actually. So this means that the process uh, uh, jump to some point at some time, then it waits a mean uh, one second, mean time one then it jumps to other side so uh, it waits uh, this value this value and then it jumps to other sides so uh, one of it is directly uh, goes to the y side then we have the probability pi hat psi x y after waiting this time, it jumps to directly to y. So we are computing uh, this, this value. And so x here, y here. Uh, but uh, uh, the other way is to jump the, uh, the third point here. And then it wants to go to this side y. So the remaining part is uh, the sum over whole z. of it jump jump to exit side and then uh, it wants to go to y this is nothing but uh, by the, uh, that definition is u y starting from the point z here okay so uh, we can uh, rewrite the last one this way and uh, we repeat for this one, then it arrives there. Uh, we comp uh, this is a exponential distribution, random variable, so this is a very easily computed after computing it. And uh, we repeat this one, then finally we get uh, this form. Okay. 
hat psi power n and it's y here. Now, uh, this is uh, the point where we apply uh, our observation before. We have a, a very good monotonicity for this uh, stochastic matrix from our definition. So, notice for psi, psi hat, we have the same probability. This is, this is our trick. So now everything is uh, done. Uh, here, uh, the D, our space, and uh, some, some sets are size, and the remaining sets are forbidden, forbidden area, xi complement. So let us uh, denote, uh, depict uh, the forbidden area by these red colors. So there are uh, some lakes, many lakes here, subsets here. So uh, this uh, lakes uh, is xi complement, and uh, those points are xi. And uh, we would like to compute uh, for the Markov process jumping from this x side to uh, to some uh, y side in uh, both uh, lying in the xi set. Okay, you see if Xi prime is larger than Xi, then uh, the component uh, becomes smaller. So Xi prime complement looks like this way. Smaller set here. So uh, blue areas are the areas for Xi prime. Now, uh, as we observed, these components, once uh, this process is starting from X to uh, some cemetery, some trap, then it never comes.